It's August 2nd, 2020. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. We've been determined like the episode number uh, uh, five, 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 sixty-three. Uh, I typed it so many times. Math is hard. And pasted it a couple times that I totally forgot what what number it was until I was able to flip over to to the thing that told me what it was. Anyways, uh, happy birthday to my brother. He's Yay! His birthday. What's it saying? Happy birthday. Uh, he says awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> is he listening to the show? <laughs> I need to remember where my thing is. I mean, we were literally just talking about like all the porn and the video games and shit, but you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think I'm missing a thing. Oh, there it is. Anyways, let's just go right right into uh, this. It, it's that time in the month again. Okay, more like end of the month, just recently sort of thing, but there really hasn't been anything else that was really anything interesting this past past month. But uh, uh, D&D Madness! Mm-hmm. Uh, right now I have three, ga- three games. <laughs> At least. Three and a half. Uh, you might, might say uh, I've got my... 3.5? Yeah, Monday thing uh, with uh, uh, our, our sex therapist, uh, Edward Angelini Cook. I have a Tuesday night game. I have a Saturday morning game and I have a Sunday morning game. And some of you who may have noticed recently uh, in our COL gaming uh, playlist, there are two new episodes. One of them, not so great, but we're working on it. And uh, two, uh, a little bit better, and just uploaded today, uh, is Bears of Dragons, which is my, me DMing, so a whole lot of, sh- like, terrible decisions going down. Uh, and uh, I have uh, players from the Bear Gamers, G-A-I-M-E-R-S, uh, Discord, uh, are uh, playing through the Tyranny of Dragons campaign. So, that's fun. Uh, we had a blast today. Um, I hope the HD version will be up soon because it kind of looks awkward. Uh, but I did stream that today because the person who I've been working with to, to stream it is uh, was out today. Uh, but uh, mm-hmm. uh, so you can at least some of my see some of my D and E shenanigans. Uh, the D and E shenanigans I do on Saturday. Are a lot worse because I'm playing my Dragonborn Barbarian very slutty. I'm proud of it. Uh, uh, and then, of course, I got my DD again. So I, I'm now like, I have a lot of DD going in my life. And Are you satisfied? No, no, no. You're not? No. no? Okay. Because I know that was one of the things you were talking about like a while back was like, I really wanted to play D&D. Well, now you're playing three games or four games, it sounds like. Yeah. DMing Still not enough? Game. Yeah, I need more. More! More, I tell you! I'm suffering for D&D madness. Um, He's just being, you know, bottom hungry. Mm-hmm. Essentially. Uh, oh, uh, my dick size in, in, in uh, uh, my Tuesday night campaign is two. Uh, uh, last uh, on Saturday, uh, I got to roll my dick size for uh, that game, and that ended up being seven inches long with a five-inch girth. It's great. <laughs> okay. Also, I've great. been also I've been rewatching The Legend of Korra, mm-hmm. uh, which has been enjoyable. So I took a break. Have from, you been? 
Critical Role and uh, rewatch and, and watching some Legend of Korra. Nice. So. Yeah, the um, I think it's coming on to Netflix soon, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm definitely looking forward to it when it shows up on Netflix, because I didn't get to watch a lot of that. I didn't get to watch a lot of anything past like the second season, if I remember, because it just got Nickelodeon removed it from regular programming and moved it into like their online programming. Yeah, and I just, I didn't have time for that shit, so. Yeah, I think I had that same problem. But I eventually got to see the whole thing. Uh, Mm -hmm. And then, then I think it was actually a couple months ago, I went on a a, uh, spontaneous, uh, impulsive uh, buying spree and bought the entire series of Avatar. The Last mm-hmm. Airbender and Legend of Korra. So I have, I have a complete and utter season for the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I, I did pop over Netflix and finish watching The Dragon Prince, which I'm excited mm-hmm. and hopeful. I, I haven't looked for any news or anything about it, but based off of the end of the, their last season, uh, I'm. It, it looks like there's going to be more. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really hope there's more. Otherwise, I'll be very upset because I love the Dragon Prince. Which, by the way, one of my players in my my Sunday ga- game oh. made a. <laughs> he he was being cookie and he made uh it his character is a wizard, and he's a pseudo dragon. Mm-hmm. Although he's considered as, as a greater pseudo dragon, so he's bigger than a normal pseudo dragon. Uh, and I'm like, you say that, and what immediately comes to mind is the dragon prince. <laughs> so mm. you, you would have to, to watch the series again to understand kind of what I mean. So, but uh, yeah, that's the that's me. Whole bucket full of fun. Damon, what's been going on with you? Um, well, speaking of fun, <laughs> um, uh, I've been back to work for a little over a month. Well, actually about a month, yeah. um, officially. Um, that's been good. Um, we are a much smaller company um but overall it has been interesting um i'm learning new things to help out other areas of my umbrella of the department um for the sake of um because they're because of everything that's going on in the world pandemic and whatever there are a lot of people wanting leaves and time off and 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 whether it be personal or actual med- Family member or whatever. So there are a lot of people um, requesting time off, and because of that, um, the one of the teams, the leave of absence team, has been swamped. And um, so we're helping, and I'm helping, and which has been good because it's new um, experience and new things to learn, and, and I'm working on it, and it's been great. Uh, um, it's also job security because, huh? work to get done yeah (laughs) yeah so yay for that um it was funny i officially came back to work on july 6th and unfortunately literally next day um i got a call from my brother who um informed me that my um niece was um shot and killed um So, um, not the greatest news to expect, but fortunately I have a very um, wonderful and understanding boss. Um, I ended up taking a half day on Thursday of that week, took the Greyhound down to Louisville, um, attended the ceremony on Friday, and then spent the weekend, you know, just being with my, you know, family. 
it was unfortunate that she was just 19. Um, that makes it even, to me personally, makes it even worse, more of a tragedy. Um, there's not been any news about anything yet. Um, I know what happened, but um, hopefully, I know what people know of what happened. Let me rephrase. I don't know exactly what happened, but um, because of that, um, there's an investigation going on because it was technically a homicide. So uh -huh. um, we shall see what unfolds there. Uh, my brother is dealing. Uh, my mother is dealing. Um, I think she's feeling a little, you know, okay with it. But she, my brother, especially for obvious reasons, is not um, having the greatest time with it. But he has taken some time off work. He's taken some personal time, and he's um, seeking therapy um, to help with the issues and the grief that he's dealing with. So um, hopefully he, you know, things will be better. It'll just take some time um, and hopefully closure. Um, but other than that, uh, working and then I think just this past week, uh, for the first time in a long time, um, Jim and I actually had a friend over for, um, we were, it was going to be a couple, but um, they're good friends of ours. We're all, you know, understanding and respectful of social distancing. And so we decided to go ahead and um, just, you know, sit down and have a meal and just um, interact socially with each other. So, um, so we had a guest. Um, it was great to have him over. Um, and um, what's the word I was looking for? And it was, you know, we had pizza and we just like sat and talked. We ended up watching um, uh, Legendary. Um, it's the HBO Max um, like ballroom um, Vogue show. Mm. Uh, it was just the first episode because I don't have HBO Max, but it was, it's quite entertaining. It's to me, I think of it like a, like America's Next Dance Crew, like meets like Project Runway in a way, because there's all a lot, a lot of fashion and stuff involved. And then you throw in like everything gay, and it kind of works. And <laughs> it's very interesting. I mean, I've Sorry, I want to I want to watch it. Um, I don't know if I want to get HBO Max just to watch it, but. I might be tempted to. I know they've done one season. It's already been um, approved for our, you know, approved for another season. So we'll see. But that's been me, Gary. Well, uh, another month is gone. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, <laughs> Well, I mean, it. the month was mostly a, you know, SSDD, you know, same shit, different day, <laughs> kind of like rinse and repeat thing. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't last month, but this coming Wednesday, I have my first doctor's appointment with my new PCP. So that'll be interesting. Yay. I have to get some stuff prepared before I go. This will probably be the first time I've ever gone to a doctor that I need to have things written down. Hmm. Um, well, because it's a new doctor, and so I'm in the midst of things. Like, so um, probably at another time, not today, I'll get into, like, stuff with my health from, like, the past, like, I don't know, eight months or whatever. But mm -hmm. long story short, like, there was some shit going on and didn't feel good and blah, blah, blah. And had a hospital like ear visit months ago and like nothing necessarily came out of it but they were like you should go see your pcp and i was like i'm trying to get into this new one because my insurance changed and like I'm trying to go to this other doctor and so they moved up the appointment from august all the way to the earlier month and then i got notified 24 hours later that i couldn't have that appointment because i wasn't officially a new patient yet mm. for said doctor so i was like fuck me sideways um <laughs> so i was just kind of annoyed uh, so I end up going to my current, soon-to-be-old PCP for, that I've been going to for years 
that I just didn't want to deal with. So I'm in transition. Mm. So I'm in the midst of doing things. So for three weeks in a row, I'm going to like have some stuff like either a doctor's appointment or a procedure or an exam or a test or something like, so I'm just like, really? Mm -hmm. So it's just a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, there's that coming up, but I realized like I need to write a list of stuff and be like, okay, so here's the situation, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, my new doctor is going to have to get all my old records from my old doctor, which my old doctor doesn't mm -hmm. want leaving him. So that'll be fine. <laughs> Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Paperwork well, for, for trans, uh, transfer of information. Well, yeah, there's paperwork that I have to fill out and turn in mm -hmm. the, the, this coming week. So, yeah. But that's one of those things. Um, work has been busy, very busy. Um, not sure how things are really going to go for the coming rest of the year uh, in terms of our country uh, and the mm -hmm. pandemic. Because things have not gone as could have gone. Mm -hmm. So uh, this coming week, I have a meeting between a couple of coworkers and my boss's boss. Uh, I got the heads up from a coworker because I went to them and I was like, do you know anything about this movie we're about to have next week? Uh, so one of the things that I've been doing or task lists that I've gotten behind on is apparently going to be redistributed. And I don't necessarily mm. feel bad about that because it wasn't necessarily fully my job until almost two months ago. And, you know, within a couple of weeks, I couldn't keep up on it, but I was like, mm -hmm. okay. And it was my boss that made the decision. But notably, my, bo my boss directly isn't invited to this meeting. <laughs> so, oh, well, you know, they they just, and the thing is, is like there's been some poor communication, you know, like I have been told inadvertently by other people and or sent emails that were not originally sent to me that said I had specific job duties that I was never told about. So, um, yeah. So this all goes back to I was warned when I got started that uh, my boss is not the most uh, detail-oriented individual. So, okay, <laughs> which okay. Both of you know that that's Ish. probably an odd mix for me. Mm -hmm. um, but what I find amusing about it is like this just goes this just gives you some insight. So my boss was in <laughs> my actual boss was in my office the other day looking at my computer was wanting some information so I'm scrolling through because I have two versions of the same spreadsheet open on two different screens because I have dual monitors and I have this is the main thing I work on all the time right now it has to do with the, the COVID-19 in our county and I'm doing all this stuff and like they asked a question and so I went to go look for some information and the comment I hear over my shoulder is is wow that's really like colorful and busy I didn't say that out loud. I said <laughs> really colorful and busy. Like what's I was going on here. <laughs> you were having what's going on here. <laughs> you were having the the in, internal uh, expression emotion of what the fuck. It's the emotion of that. You didn't actually verbalize your emotion. Oh. Nope. I tried really hard to stare straight ahead at the computer screen because I knew if I did actually try to turn my head or anything, it was, yeah, it's going to be a dead giveaway. Mm -hmm. what I was thinking. Um, and I said, what? And then they were like, you know, I said, they were like, that's a lot of stuff. And I was like, yeah, this is the spreadsheets that I work on all the time. This is the stuff that I'm tracking and trying to keep up on so I can answer questions like you have right now. You know, so. Or be able to answer things that, like, people want to know, you know, like, when I get asked something about, you know, I can't find when this da 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 da, -da happened. And I'm like, okay, give me a second. And then I, you know, and I have the answer, like, pretty rapidly. Why? Because I've been tracking all of this data. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I've been doing to help, you know, like, telling the state about delayed test result times. Blah, blah, blah. The only way we'd know that is if somebody actually compiled the data. Because the web-based web yeah, it's called a web-based database. Sounds redundant. Uh, is not user-friendly and will not spit that shit out at you. So mm -hmm. you'd have to research it. And ain't nobody got time to research almost 1,000 records to find 
the three different pieces of data to compile it. Luckily, I've been tracking it since the beginning on a spreadsheet. So there we go. Good for you. So I, what I've been told is when we have the meeting this week, it's going to be that workload is going to be redistributed. So between Monday and Tuesday going into Wednesday, I need to get caught up further than I have been behind. Um, I'm not going to completely get caught up, but if I can make a decent dent in it, it won't look as bad when mm -hmm. it gets redistributed. So, yeah. Cool. Help out the person who's going to take over for you. Well, what it is is uh, what I've been doing is going to get redistributed to about 15 people. So oh. instead of one person doing it, because I can't keep up on it, now everyone's going to be responsible for it themselves. It has to do with their casework. Mm -hmm. So there we go. It's probably not going to go over well, and some people are going to be annoyed, and other people won't give a shit because they're kind of already doing it themselves. So. <laughs> they're, they're doing it properly anyways. Well, it's just some people, so familiar. some people are very God, possessive. Like when they start, yeah. they want to finish it. And I'm perfectly fine with that. Good. So I get, that but, means I don't have to do this for you. <laughs> well, but the reason why our, our department director got involved was because they were handling a grievance by somebody else and come to find out there was an expectation that a phone call should have taken place on a specific day and it didn't happen. So 24 hours later, now my director's getting involved and is asking the question about why this follow-up didn't, didn't happen, and happen. Mm. because i'm behind and mm -hmm. no but like i didn't say this out loud because i really wanted to say no offense it's only been 24 freaking hours like chill yeah. the fuck out people but you know Record. so and come to get responses like that quickly on certain things just saying well so come to find out also that the um, the individuals like um, yeah I, anyways it's uh, <laughs> I think I think I know what's happening and it's it's better to just be quiet sometimes yeah. basically it's a cluster. <laughs> um mm -hmm. I mean it'll be interesting to see how it kind of goes I the anyways yeah. Um, and then on top of all that, uh, a week ago Thursday, after I got out of work, um, I found that my father had taken a fall in the kitchen. Uh, mm. It was on the floor and had been there pretty much most of the day. Oh, no. Oh, wow. So I called emergency uh, medical services to come and uh, assist him. So I had him taken to the ER. They did x-rays and CAT scans from head to toe. Uh, no breaks, no fractures, no hairlines, no like major trauma or bruising, so to speak. Uh, but he was really sore and stiff and hurt and blah, blah, blah. So he spent pretty much a week in the hospital. Um, he uh, had an astronomical CPK count. CPK is the chemical that um, can be reside in your bodily system when your muscle tissue breaks down. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it usually happens because of like inactivity um, and mm -hmm. uh, some type of trauma. So his was so far off the charts um so mm -hmm. the diagnosis was this one word that i can't remember but long story short they had to flush them with iv fluids for like days and days and days to get that down otherwise if it builds up it can damage your kidneys yay so now he's in a rehab facility um his mm -hmm. delirium is like really high it's a little better in the new facility than in the hospital but it's still not great but delirium is a state of mental confusion um, it's usually brought on by like new environments and new surroundings and not understanding what's going on. It uh, sometimes like can seem like dementia. Mm -hmm. um, it's very challenging and stressful um, because I find myself like <laughs> repeating over and over ago and like being the the truth serum to a person who doesn't understand it doesn't want to hear the truth. Mm. So. Uh, yesterday, the neuropsychologist was visiting while I was visiting, which was very nice. Um, she was very pleasant. She helped like kind of explain some things. And I think she actually made a little improvement with my dad. Like, Yay. but the, the short term victories, like right. mm -hmm. today we're back to where's his car? He needs to get something out of the trunk that's in the box. It's like, OK, first of all, you don't have a car anymore. Sold that to my friend Drew a couple years ago. Second of all, 
I don't know what this cardboard box is about, and I don't know what's in it, but it certainly isn't in the trunk, and it isn't in the car that you no longer have, that Drew actually no longer has. Like, yeah. That you actually no longer have. Right. None of this is, like, applicable. Mm. Um, last night, this is the doozy. Last night was, there was uh, men, there was a party, and two men came into his room and asked him and told him that they were having a party, and then he needed to wear a woman's dress. And he was asking me questions about this party. And I said, I didn't know what he was talking about. And then he was trying to explain it to me. And I was like, dad, there was no party last night. He's like, well, he's like, I did, you do all about it. And I was like, no, not really. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh and then I my. finally said to him, are you sure this wasn't a dream? And he kind of thinks. And then he says, mm, it could have been. I was like, I think it was a dream. I'm like, because that's not the reality. <laughs> you're in a rehab facility there would not have been a dance here there would not have been two men that came into the room wearing women's clothes that would have asked you to put on a dress nope no 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 so kind <sighs> of like a year ago august mm -hmm. i'm going through something very similar all over again but he's a little different now um he's having more problems with his sugar uh and stuff like that so it's so now i'm trying to visit him every day and the reason why he's in the facility is in because it's the only rehab facility in the county that allows any visitors mm. so and it is the one he was in before so i already know the lay of the land and pretty much everything um mm -hmm. so yeah so i went and visited him yesterday for a few hours and today for a few hours um, nice. yeah so we will see what happens with that he's probably going to be um released definitely not this week from the looks mm -hmm. of it probably sometime next week if not after two weeks it really depends like mm -hmm. he, he does not have much stamina nor strength and that's the big thing that is why he's there is that he needs to get that built up and in the meantime i need to find out about like the caseworker is supposed to help me figure out to get like some in-home like med assistance and some other things so. mm -hmm. that'll probably Wait. be helpful shall see and my yep. father's pretty much like going to be diagnosed as a diabetic now, which he's going to not be happy about because sweets are his thing, and you know, <laughs> checking his his sugar all the time and taking insulin and all that is just not something he's hip to. Yeah. I mean, they're doing it at the facility, but yeah, yeah. So mm -mm -mm. yeah, mm. I do what mm. I gotta do. Um, there we go. The world's still going to hell in a handbasket. Mm -hmm. And by the world, I specifically mean like the 48 contiguous, for the most part. I mm -hmm. uh, don't know much about what else is happening in the world outside of our country because I just, I don't know. Mm -hmm. We're just one big cluster to begin with. I don't have to deal that, drive down and focus on one thing. Mm hmm. Yeah. Hey, we love you guys, but um, we're dealing with stuff. But just, just, just don't worry. We'll take care of it. Maybe. Help. All right. Shall we move on? Let's. All right. Let's go yeah. into this. <laughs> Gary, what's been going on in the Facebook-ish lands? Uh, over in Facebook, we got three new likes this month. Uh, we would like to thank the following individuals for liking us on Facebook. Tiffany Wilson Lane, Kitty Sage, and Anthony Cruz. And I have a wild speculation that two of them are because of our flashback episode, which we will talk about a little bit later. Uh, we also got some mm -hmm. Facebook comments on posts. And uh, COL 558, let's talk about food, was all-time faves. Uh, Tim Shell said, love the episode. I hope you do more. I tried Jeff's version of grilled cheese with Munster. Delicious. I'm hooked. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, COL 559, uh, Alti No Shade, A Whole New Pride. Tim Shell said, another good episode. I hope you would have a topic about racism in the bear community. I think now would be a good discussion. Uh, actually, quite a while ago, we did do one 
Uh, it's been years now. A couple. But we could. We could. It was a two-parter, if I remember. Yeah. Circle back around. Yeah. And uh, do some. So, uh, Tim, if you or someone else you know, it would be a good guest to come on. Um, by all means. Uh, it could be like a little thing that we do, even a little like series, so to speak, um, to talk about some stuff. I have personally noticed events and businesses, things within the community. Um, and there's a word for this, and I can't remember what it's called. It's the when you're aware of something, you see more of it. Like, oh, I forget, I forget like what that's you, called. It's always, like people relate it to cars. Like you're thinking about getting this model of car or you just get this car and then you see it everywhere. There's a term for it. Anyways. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's because of Black Lives Matter and the focus on racism in our country. If like I'm now more aware of paying attention to persons of color being promoted um, through the media representation or things like that. So... But yeah, I think that would be something we can do. And then, uh, say, well, episode 562, what is pleasure? Someone named Edward Angelini Cook uh, commented and said, I love oral pleasure. Mm -hmm. Is he a new listen? listen? Yeah, he must be. Yeah. I mean, he does like oral pleasure. Yeah. Ah. A-U-R-A-L. Yeah. As in audio as in sound mm -hmm. as in, mm -hmm. yeah sounding wait wait no wait <laughs> no no no, 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 no. <laughs> sounds I no, think it's a little presumptuous you two so be careful there oh, yeah, mm, true we don't know maybe some people are into yeah. that and um on instagram we got a couple new followers so we would like to thank sir king bear lamar and justice underscore four underscore the underscore family and Kentucky as in KY Bubba Bear. Hmm. We I who, wonder who that is. Yeah, as I say, we know who the last one is. Yeah. So that's the the Facebook family stuff. Damon, I think we have some YouTube things. Yes, we do. Uh, we got a few new subscribers on YouTube. We have um, Seika the Bear, um, Dustin Jacobs, and Eulalia. I'm okay. going to say Eulalia. It could be something else, but that's what I'm going to say. Those, <laughs> those first two are two of my players in my Sunday game, which is now a show on Cubs Out Loud. Lovely. Oh. It's not a podcast. I'm not doing it as a podcast. Cool, 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 cool. Additional YouTube content. Ah ha ha ha. But Sika you got it. is, is it our Sika? rogue, and uh, Dustin plays our Dragonborn Paladin. Cool zines. Um, so we got a few comments on episode C uh, C well six or six five sixty two. What is pleasure? Um, the Nash production set to some extent sale phones are glorified portable dopamine dispensers. Not convinced people actually use them as a communication device are more for the narcissistic posting of food I'm hearing you're not and the ever impressive, quote, best night ever photos. <laughs> Partially true. I sense some sass and sarcasm in that. <laughs> Maybe. I, um, I, also, I did some tea. Mm -hmm. um, also on um, um, COL 562 we got two messages from Owen um, the first one was um, was the self-harm road really the best way to go about talking about pain and pleasure that was a bit triggering and then he put an edit I don't know maybe I was hearing that wrong yeah I and then I, I think we mentioned self-harm, but we were kind of showing as it's some people trying to get that pleasure from pain, but it's bad or something like that. I don't remember the exact thing that we were so, talking about. 
I was the one that had brought it up. The reason I did is because I have a best friend from college who was into cutting when we were in college. And I had never met anybody who was into that before. And I talked with them about it to find out why they did it. And part of it was to release the emotional pain. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I had tried to say, like, it's, it's people might say it's warped. Like, it, it doesn't make sense to do it, but you're not the person who's going through that moment. So mm-hmm. inflicting pain upon yourself to relieve other pain that you have mm-hmm. or to... Like use it as a uh, an outlet for yourself mm-hmm. uh, is really kind of the context of what that was. So my apologies, Owen, and the rest of our audience. Um, that wasn't meant to be triggering to anybody. It was an example of how there's a, a direct connection between pain and pleasure, and that it's a fine line between one versus the other for some people. Um, you know, and the decisions that we make sometimes can be you know painful to us, but at the same time they could be things that bring us pleasure. And then it kind of borderlines on like, but is it for your better good? And mm-hmm. that also kind of gets into addiction and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. I know that I think that was what you were trying to go on. And then um, further on, um, Owen commented um, about the mask thing for autistic sensory issues come into play. Although I haven't had any issues myself, there are people who have had the have had issues. Um, and I've, I've heard about this. I've heard that there are uh, people that have like issues with putting something over their mouths, whether it's, whether they're autistic or it, you know, we've talked about before, like triggering certain, you know, mental, you know, issues. Um, And again, I can, I understand and respect that. And I think most people would as well. I think the decision, those who have a concern with mask usage um, need to, determine for themselves is if a place has specifically stated like masks are mandatory, like going in is like you have to wear a mask, then um, you need to decide whether you can personally make the, you know, effort to, to go into that place with the mask on, or you choose not to wear the mask. I think that, and then but if you're choosing not to wear the mask, then maybe you shouldn't go into the place where the masks mm-hmm. are mandatory. It's just being respectful to to those rules because technically those stores and places of businesses are uh, are, are private institutions, so they, they can make their own rules for that. Um, and then it's just about yeah. making sure that you're aware. It's like okay, because of this type of issue, I can't really wear a mask. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to take special precautions. Making mm-hmm. precautions, uh, staying at home as much as possible, ordering deliveries. Uh, yeah. Because you can uh, at least uh, uh, easily. I, I know a lot of delivery places, uh, if they are not just leaving stuff at the door, they will leave it, knock, step back, uh, and provide that social distance just to make sure mm-hmm. that you get the appropriate thing. Uh, such as, like, I, I think I ordered pizza a month or so back uh, during during this and um, we went uh, I think I did it a couple times one of them left it on on my doormat which is fine it's in a cardboard box I don't care uh, and then somebody else actually brought one of those like portable foldable tables mm-hmm. <laughs> and she <laughs> and she put it at the door put everything on on top knocked step back <laughs> I got it and I'm like yeah. thank you very much uh, I was like mm-hmm. oh this is neat <laughs> Yeah, um, Dom- Domino's I think specifically has the um, the portable tables that they put them on that they put. It's basically a small little box that they didn't put the food on top of yeah. to kind of not have it sitting directly on the porch, the ground, wherever yeah. you may need it to be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure if it was a requirement for. Whoever. I I, I want to say it's a, it was the same place that I ordered from before. It's just a different driver. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh-huh. uh, so uh, I and, it, and it's like it's you know those like canvas foldable chairs. It's kind of like that, but just like an end table sort of thing. Okay. So cool. I I just I was like, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, people are finding uh, great ways of of ensuring those things so that's one thing is the delivery there's plenty of delivery services uh, like uh, during this entire uh, uh, pandemic I've been using 
uh, Instacart. Uh, okay. So delivery one because uh, I'm feeling too anxious to go to a store with all these rules when I've been known to go mm -hmm. to a grocery store and I'm literally going from one end to the other back and forth because I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do this, and then I'm like, mm -hmm. oh no, mm -hmm. I forgot. I need to do this. And I go all have to go all the way to the other side, and I don't want to have to like go through this specific line and have to like figure out how to backtrack before I can get everything and uh, not having that freedom ca I think causes me a little anxiety so which is one of the reasons why I just use one of the delivery services in this case Instacart which I think it was this mm -hmm. month where they delivered me the wrong order <laughs> yeah you talk or yeah I think you talked about maybe, that maybe it was this month I remember but uh it, which is fine. Okay. I mean, they they figured it out, refund my money. I was able to reorder and get my stuff the, pretty much the next day. So it, it wasn't like I was starving for food or anything. So cool. Uh, but uh, so uh, that's yeah. that's that's all the comments on the Facebooks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, moving on over into the Twitterverse, uh, we've got uh, Cowboy Slutty Man underscore Up. There's two P's. Uh, zero one. Uh, Harm Makaru. Harm Makaru. Karu? Something like that. Hung Daddy UK. Lila GR. 807 um, And we thank you for following us over on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Jerry, what's been going on over this past month for shows? Uh, so. At the top of July, we did the What's Going On for June, and then we took a week off, because uh, it was the 4th, like, yeah, I mean, the, the July 4th and all that, and uh, then we did a flashback episode to episode 321, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, where we had the lovely Ms. Tammy as our guest, and we talked about um, her experiences being a woman in the bear community. And uh, specifically, I remember from that episode, we talked about her getting a growler profile, which she still has to this day, mm -hmm. um, the, all these years later. And um, so, and uh, um, I don't know if I want to call it ironically, um, non sequitur, but by coincidence, she actually reached out to me because I've been posting for the most part. Um, I have to put a post up today. I've been basically doing daily posts about Dad's progress and what's going on with him medically mm -hmm. on Facebook. But she reached out to me, and um, she has been a neuro uh, nurse for her whole career and has a great many years of experience. It was really helpful to have like a private chat with me about what I'm going through with Dad and what things are kind of going on with him. Like She doesn't know the case specifically. I kind of made a joke and was like, if I could import you right now, I would. <laughs> like, because I really feel like it would be really helpful to, like, have um, her see him, like, in his state and his, like, what's going on and that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. because I know Tammy, Miss Tammy, as well as I do, I know that she could handle anything that he dishes out and, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> would... Like, is is the nurse to go battle with, I guess? Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, she, like she, she will know. No gruff. Well, she's so here's the thing about Miss Tammy is that she is um, incredibly caring and compassionate and a beautiful soul and very kind and caring, like and soft. But she also has a really hard edge about her mm -hmm. and she applies it oh. when it's necessary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> David knows. Sorry. So <laughs> you know, and I got introduced to her because of, you know, the leather kink community. So um there's a part of me that's like I really wish I kind of had a Miss Tammy in your in your that I could like, mm -hmm. you know, have in my immediacy of like, you know, chosen family to be like, you know, I need your help with this, you know, kind of a situation. But it was really good of her to like reach out and kind of talk. So um Aww. but as it turned out, like that she did that after um, I we had done the flashback episode, and I even uh, reached out to her and was like, "Hey, FYI, we did the flashback episode of when you were on, just so you know." Um, and I think that's why we got two of the follows that we did. Um, 
that I had mm. made reference to earlier uh, on Facebook awesome. or the two of the lakes. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after that, uh, we did um, 561. Let's talk about sex, asking and receiving. Uh, where um, a certain gentleman by the name of Ed joined us, our resident sex therapist. And then last week we uh, returned to the What Is series and we talked about What Is Pleasure. Mm-hmm. So, and here we are. It's 563. Mm-hmm. And it is another month has gone by already. Yeah. Yeah. It feels weird that we're in August. Like I yeah, just, I, don't, I don't know. I don't. I don't know how else to say it, but it feels weird that we're in August. Yeah, it's the uh, end of my thirty uh, ninth year. Oh, that's right. Oh yeah. Oh somebody, yeah. Somebody is it's in, uh, officially going to be an old 27 man. Twenty seven days. Whatever the fuck mm-hmm. you say. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be going, uh, finally following David uh, a year later, uh, uh, going over the hill. Mm-hmm. I'm also following uh, 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 a certain uh, uh, paladin cub from uh, 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 Chicago. A day later, ah, <laughs> he's ah. turning forty. A day before me, and I know we've we've had some uh, some sort of connection. Usually, just like you know friends on Facebook, followed on Twitter, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's an amazing photographer. Uh, yes. It, and then he had me. <laughs> I mean, whatever. It's fine. I'm <laughs> jealous. Okay. Um, in any case. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, look forward to that this month. It's on a Saturday, by the way. Wink. <laughs> Are you trying to say that we should actually do the show on Saturday? Yeah. Um. Well, we'll I figure mean, it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. let's we, figure we it out offline. We don't have like, to. We'll, we'll figure, figure it out. Yeah. But, but I'm just saying, it's a Saturday. I'm off. Wink. Uh, I, I also get to do, get to to play play D and D. Play, not DM, but play uh, on my mm-hmm. birthday, which, which is like almost a huge birthday present for me right now because uh, I'm on a D&D. Anyways. Mm. So we go into this. Um, trying to avoid uh, more copyright claims on our videos. Which is fine. <laughs> Let me just say this. We get some copyright claims. Uh, I admit it. They're not strikes. We're fine. There's mm-hmm. no problem. Here's my feeling on this, okay? So, so, some, of, some of our videos are, are blocked in some countries. Oh, they are? <laughs> I just found that out today. Why are they oh. blocked in some countries? Uh, because we have a copyright claim <laughs> Seriously, well, now you know. yeah, the, and it, now we know. I, I think it's based off of like one company has the rights to it here, and some other company has the rights somewhere else. And for some reason, they can't do the sharing. I don't know what the specifics are. All I know is that just today, when I was looking through our videos, I see the see this different status. Mm. And it, oh. and as I said, it's fine. It it's not like the videos are taken down. It's not like we're really in trouble for anything. It's just some restrictions. So if for some reason well, some of our videos have disappeared from you, it's because um, copyright music. <laughs> right, but that's kind of important to know, though, Jav. That like you know some of our international audience can't see some episodes because you know copyright claim. I was under the presumption every time we got a little notification about a copyright claim, they're like, we're going to take this 1% of the 0.0001 cent of a dollar you're actually might never going to get paid. <laughs> yeah, we're not making money from the videos anyways. Right. So it's like... Well, not, not <laughs> from 
from like somebody just watching the videos just but other places you know patreon and stuff like that we've got other income methods um but uh, uh yeah so i just noticed that i haven't gone into it but so if for some reason some of our videos have disappeared from where you are and you're not in the the united states probably why so mm. i apologize Anyways, mm -hmm. in any case, let's talk about uh, 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 sexy guys. Uh, first off, we got like, retweet if you like a band with big pecs, big arms, and a bigger dot 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 belly. This big beefy bear one. Uh, also, he does mm -hmm. hashtag body positive, hashtag sex positive, hashtag power lifter, hashtag home workouts. Yep. And all I can say is, yes, yes, yes. So what did yeah. I do do when I saw that? I liked it. I retweeted it. Mm -hmm. Yay! You know how Twitter works. Spread the <laughs> spread the uh, 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 good looking men uh, uh, around. Stay <laughs> can't deal with your sassy ass today. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I've been following this guy for a while. Um, mm -hmm. he's, he is very, you know, scrumptious. Like, yeah. And he's not shy at all. So, so No, not at all. I know this is probably not going to go well with some people, but I will say this. I did follow uh, him and other accounts like kind of similar to his. But I've stopped following some individuals because they're really popular. Mm. And they keep reappearing in my feed because other people that I follow follow them as well. Mm -hmm. like, and so it just kind of becomes annoying because I keep seeing it over and over and over again. And I've moved into this kind of mindset that like I want to try, try being the operative word, to follow, retweet when it comes to it and like lesser known individuals or mm. less common like that's fair pictured individuals if i can um you know bigger guys persons of color like trying to fuck with the algorithm i guess is the way i'm looking at it mm -hmm. to buck the whole like you know oh i'm a daddy because i have one gray hair in my chest hair on, on top of my six pack of abs or what anyways it's just that's me being an ass <laughs> this, is, this is this is this is my dad bod like, <laughs> that like little bit of like like barely like no not even love handle like it's just like flat chest or flat you know stomach yeah. with like right with maybe the hair like maybe some gray hair yeah. like i'm you a have, dad bod like yeah just enough of a belly to make not it so even. your abs don't show up. No. <laughs> That's no. it. <laughs> Some of them not even that. Like, this just... Anyways. So, and, yeah. and it's... And I realize we're yucking some people's yum, and that's not really the intent, but it is... The well, judgment you know. is coming from a place where we feel like people are co-opting labels to benefit themselves, mm -hmm. not in a virtuous way. Right. Yeah. So there's that. I'm sorry you don't actually have a dad bod. You are still sexy, but you don't have to call it a dad bod. You're well, just sexy in a different way. Just because dad bod is now really is the the sex the sexy that's in fashion doesn't mean that you need to call yourself a dad bod when you really kind of don't have a dad bod. Well, and I guess my feeling on it is like there's an age thing that also needs to come into play. So is I'm it possible? I'm 32 be... and I got a gray hair, so I must be a daddy now. Well, technically by age you could be a daddy at that point. Um, yeah, but that's a whole other <laughs> like thing. actually a daddy. Like you, you have inseminated a woman and you know they have or a child, made a donation, or not, or made yeah. a donation. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, or you have been a baby. trying desperately. <laughs> To make butt babies happen. <laughs> right.
Right. Quite possible. Are you uh, uh, adopted yeah, dad yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, or dad yeah. who adopt still our daddies? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. Might not be genetically uh, connected, but still you're connected by the heart. True, true, true. Very true. Flutter you. <sighs> Moving on. David? Um, I put down one of my crushes is back. Um, um, this is Mr. This is Dino Hunter 68. He is also known as Cliff. And if you look at the pictures, you will recognize this person. This is the um, part of the infamous or famous for some. Um, on Twitter, um, um, and, but he was one of my like daddy bear crushes for a long time. Hush. <laughs> I you sense your partner, Jim, has something to <laughs> yes. say about this. Yes, yes, apparently. But um, yeah, you know, he was he was a crush, um, and he is now. He has his own, um, I think when it came out, his own kind of X-rated Twitter. Um, he's posting a lot of their um, previous content and pictures of him. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, previous, their, their previous content and also um, um, pictures of him, I'm assuming more recent. Oh, my God. <laughs> For our audience at home that doesn't understand what's happening on Damon's end, <laughs> there are things off camera apparently that are taking place that Damon is responding to. So we're not yes. really seeing anything, but yeah, you know, yeah, you're not seeing it, but I am. <laughs> Thanks. But yes, this is him, and he, you know, he is, you know, sexy daddy bear. Yeah, and he has his own Twitter, and you can follow his videos. He was on, he was on Tumblr as well for a long time and you know he's part of a triad or triad not triad um, a quad essentially and they live in florida if i'm not mistaken Ta -da. Yay. there you go sexy Yay, um so i decided to check out one of our new twitter followers Mm -hmm. uh, the slutty cowboy can oh, be found yeah. on Twitter at cowboy slutty. Um, his bio description: I am the slutty cowboy or slut puppy on XTube. Sex positive, anal fisting, sex toys, mental health, leather, and LGBT community. Feel free to DM me. Um, and he's from Pennsylvania. He's from like my state. Uh, so, and I decided to pick the one that says 31 days of vid hashtag videos, hashtag clips for my hashtag birthday. Um, and he has a whole bunch of hashtags with masturbation. So if I'm correct, I get the impression that he's going to put up 31 videos over the course of the month of him, like, pleasing himself. So some of us might want to follow him. Uh... <laughs> Probably, possibly, and it's just for fans. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. He has been very busy. He has 2,500 plus tweets. So, there will pretty much always be content. Um, so, perhaps that will be uh, of interest to folks. But he's uh, a stocky guy with a dark, like, uh, red auburnish beard, glasses, I think, kind of like blondish hair. Um, nice nipples, broad chest, a little bit of a belly, yeah, thick thighs, you know, yeah. all of it is just kind of... Mm -hmm. He's marks. got a lot going for him. Huh? A lot of check marks. Uh, he may have a negative check mark for you, though, Jeff. Yep. He has uh, long I, hair. I'm just, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't going to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he could just, you know... Tie it back and I, you know. No, it doesn't work. I, it, it's literally a wear ball anyway. cap. <laughs> <laughs> Although he appears to like likes to wear a cowboy hat a lot, mm, and yeah. the slutty cowboy. 
Yeah, I, I mean, it's fine. I mean, he does, <laughs> he does him. Maybe, maybe not my thing, but maybe somebody else's, so. Good oh, we've got a cute patootie. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right, I'm, I'm scrolling through his follow button. What did you say, Gary? Uh, I was just going to say, I've been scrolling through his Twitter early. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he has a lot of fun. There's a video called Unicorn Edging. Now I'm, I'm, okay. Yeah. I'm... <laughs> I'm not sure about this, but you are intrigued. I well, there is a part of me that says sometimes it is best not to know things because once you know them, you cannot unknow them. True, that is very, very true. So, yeah, yeah. Anyways, oh, on. that's a butthole. Okay. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wow. <laughs> well, if you go far enough in his Twitter, back in his Twitter, not too far, <laughs> you'll see a very tasteful black and white photo. I was like, oh, okay. And there's that. Yeah. Nice. Uh, moving on into our links. Uh, I would provide a link. The only thing is I linked it previously, which was the Dragon Prince, because I finished watching that. Uh, Netflix has been advertising Transformers Word on Cybertron. I would not watch that, which is the reason why I have not linked it, because uh, I don't have, <laughs> like, over the thing for it, but um, I'll probably watch it eventually, because uh, I've been a Transformers fan since uh, the original uh, television series, uh, which was basically mm -hmm. a, a toy commercial uh, back in, yeah. the, in, in the 80s, so Mm-hmm. And uh, I still love the Michael Bay movies. Okay. And it's and it's not to say that, that they're good movies, just I I enjoy them. It's like the Michael Bay uh Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Maybe they're not good movies, but I thoroughly enjoy them. But yeah, that's me. Anyways, moving on. Gary, what's your Netflix -es? Uh, so my Netflix picks, the, uh, for the past month, there was only two things that I actually watched in the month of July. I've been watching a ton of YouTube, actually, um, stuff, but, uh, so one of them is a, um, documentary called Disclosure that I believe Laverne Cox, um, was a producer for, um, mm -hmm. and had put, uh, stuff together with it and so um it's in the genres of documentary film social cultural lgbtq um inspiring investigative i honestly really enjoyed this it's it's new um it's part of what netflix calls the black lives matter collection which i didn't even know was a thing it's pretty cool uh made this year and it just talks about being trans and like trans through history mostly in terms of media and representation how vastly that has changed the landscape um, for trans individuals and it goes back to something i think like the three of us can relate to is when you see yourself portrayed then you feel okay like you feel more comfortable with yourself and your existence because you see that there's someone else out there so to me that's kind of like um, Damon and I, we talk about this with COLDR for um, Comes Out Loud Drag Race, how, you know, queens of color, um, you know, that it's important that they have representation. Juju mm -hmm. in the most recent season being Asian, uh, being Laotian. Like, it's it's a big thing to be recognized, to be seen within our yeah. community, kind of as a person, slightly regrettably, you know, that's put on a pedestal in a way, but like that there's some representation. And I mm -hmm. think that's true for us in the bear community as well. It's like, you know, I didn't know about the bear community when I was growing up and struggling with my sexual identity and who I was in my teens into college until I got into college. And then I kind of learned about it, but I was like afraid of it, wasn't really sure about it. And notably, this was during what I call like the Jack Radcliffe clone era. Um, so everybody was, you know, like these hyper masculine, stereotypical, you know, dudes. Um, and I didn't really see fat guys. Um, and that has mm -hmm. really changed since the 90s. So 
I think it's important, you know, when you can see that kind of stuff. So, and I'm a big documentary kind of person, so I really appreciated being able to see this one. So I highly recommend it. It's a uh, just an hour and forty seven minutes. So if you like, want a little movie thing to check out, and then if you know who Hannah Gadsby is, um, she kind of became an international sensation when, uh, as a stand up comedian, she did her first special called uh, Nanette, which was meant to be her swan song, like I'm leaving comedy, like I'm not doing stand up comedy anymore, and she did this show, and then. Netflix aired it and the world like went nuts for her. <laughs> so, um, and Nanette is a, it's a comedy show, but if you've seen it, like it has a heavy message that gets delivered and crafted in such a way. And so this is sort of the sequel. It's her second special. It's called Hannah Gadsby Douglas. And she does such an awesome job in this one talking about, I believe I'm uh, talking about autism, like about being autistic and how when she got diagnosed as an adult, like it vastly changed her outlook looking backwards. Um, and the whole like aspect of how she was treated when she was a child and why she responded to things a certain way and the way she sees certain things is different um, than say like the average or the, the larger population. And that really mm -hmm. affects things. So um, it's a really, really good show. One of the favorite things about it is in the very beginning, she sets out the outline of what she's going to cover and how she's going to do certain things. The fact that there is a mic drop moment. Like, I mean, it's really comical, like how she like, and it's not making fun of her. It's it's interesting how she lays all this stuff out to prepare the audience. And then she does this stuff and that's the show. Um it's about an hour and 12 minutes long. If you liked her first one, I really, really, really recommend that you see the second one because I think she's a standout, honestly, in terms of like her perspective and delivering humor, but also doing something else. And when my bestie was up a couple of weeks ago when we watched it, I told her, I said, she kind of reminds me of George Carlin. Mm -hmm. George Carlin, as a as a classic stand up comedian, like started breaking the mold because he would talk about his view of society and like the in idiosyncrasies of how we operate um, and we do certain things. And you know, he had like the seven words you can't say on television, and like he was famous for a lot of different things. But I found him highly stimulating as a comedian, societal observer because he would talk about like how things are out there and how they get developed and sometimes we don't question things and we just kind of go along with it when in fact we probably really should be challenging and questioning stuff and i see an essence of that in, in hannah um so I, I really like her stuff so mm -hmm. i suggest you go um check it out and apparently i just saw on netflix because i pulled up the page she is an emmy nominee for variety special comma writing so yay mm. yeah Needle. yeah Hey, guess what, folks? Yep. That's the end. Oh. There are plenty of ways to contact us. Leave us your, your feedback, and we will talk about it on these shows, which we try to do once a month, uh, whenever possible. Uh, you can pop over to our blog at uh, CubsOutLoud.com. Shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361 we'll talk. That's 361-265-8255. Uh, put that in your phone. Put us on speed dial. Give us a call. Give us a ring and ding. Um, you can uh, follow us on various social media outlets such as Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, uh, Twitter, and of course on YouTube. You can uh, join our Entourage chat and speak to us directly and speak to the rest of our Entourage crew over at tinyworld.com slash telegram dash col. You can also subscribe to our Google Calendar uh, to see when we plan these things. Sometimes it's very short notice but hey you know whatever <laughs> we never say that we're professional podcasters we just do it a lot uh you can find that all at tinyurlcom slash calendar dash col you can uh, find some merchandise uh such as uh these version two shirts in different styles i got a sleeveless gary has a what do they call that baseball jersey no yeah so but there's a I don't well now I don't know what's on the website because this is a couple years old. Um, I want to say this should be a three quarter sleeve. 
but I don't know if it really is a three quarter sleeve or it's just that I'm short. Um, <laughs> well, being honest, because like it's full length sleeve for me. Um, so I think it is a full length sleeve baseball raglan. I think is the the model style. Um, Owen, who uh, has been a patron, just got one of these in red, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, red instead of the blue that I'm wearing. So yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, hats like Gary is wearing. Uh, and Damon is not wearing anything of ours right now. So no, he's, he's a, no, I am not. I I ordered I ordered something and it is coming in the mail. Oh. Mm-hmm. I think I know what you ordered. Uh, we yeah. Would, I would have put up, up face masks. The only thing is they're god awful expensive through Zazzle and not worth it. So. Sorry. Fair. Would have done like it. that is fair. I mean, like I, I mean, like up just to, astronomically to ri- ridiculously expensive. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's uh, I'm. We're saving you money uh, uh, for that, even though we would love to. Uh, you know what you can do? Mm-hmm. You can go. You can make your own face mask, and you can buy our sticker and just. There you go. <laughs> we got stickers. I was just tell- sure. I was just telling uh, some of my players today um, that we have a shirt called "Now That You're Sticky, Here's Here's Your Cookie" uh, shirt. Nice. Because there was actually I, I put cookies in the game, not for that <laughs> reference, but anyways, it, it kind of just came up after we were discussing cookies. Um, I would say this if you wanted to make masks with our logo on it you should just buy the damn shower curtain from Zazzle and then cut up the shower curtain and like with a sewing machine just makes a damn mask and it would be far cheaper because you could get way more masks out of a shower curtain as fabric than just buying a single mask through the website mm. yeah that's a, that's a good idea by the way we have shower curtains pricey if you get a good sale, and that's the key to wait. Right, does it, isn't there like a uh, bundle of that too? Didn't I set that up as a as a bundle like it, it like that with some towels or something? I don't remember. Maybe. But it's there, so so check it out. Anyways, zazzle dot com slash comes out loud. Again, if you are outside the United States, uh, you can go to the local version. Of it, so zazzle.ca, zazzle.co.uk, zazzle.coms.au, I think is Australia. Uh, uh, you could go to zazzle.com, scroll down to the bottom, and just switch the country at the bottom, and that will take you to the right place. But slash comes out loud. Doesn't matter which site, just just slash comes out loud, and you'll get the same products, but they'll be priced in your local currency, and uh, I believe they are distributed also locally which means shipping costs should be a lot less than trying to get them to the United States. Cool. Uh, you could cool. also become a patron. Um, and as, as we were mentioned, uh, uh, Owen, as a patron uh, for a year, has gotten a free T-shirt. Uh, so we've got uh, a bunch of rewards that are available there. Check them out at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, if you just want to send us a few bucks because uh, it, as a one-time thing, uh, just go to paypal.me slash comes out loud. Uh, you can just uh, uh, shoot some cash that way. We would appreciate it very much and hopefully we can improve things. Uh, we were thinking about getting me a second camera so they can see me while we're recording the show in, instead of the weird way we're doing it now. Um, so that's that's one thing we're looking into. Uh, you can rate us on uh, Apple Podcasts, subscribe to us, Google Play Podcasts, and over on Spotify. You can find me anywhere in the internet as Box at Box Cubby, Box Cub, Box Something or Other, and on Twitch as uh, and twitch.tv slash windgem, which is actually where I streamed our B&D game earlier today. Mm-hmm. If you want to get in touch with me, you can find me as theatercub79 on most bear-related sites. Um, are on Facebook, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. FYI, the Twitter is not safe for work. If you would like to find me online, you can pretty much go anywhere and put in Gabber73. That's G A R B E A R 73. Um, just a pleasant reminder if you would send me a message, that would be helpful so I know that you're not a bot. Uh, you know, 
Because if I take the time, sometimes I look at y'all profiles and I'll be like, okay, all you're doing is nothing but posting like, like, like advertising. So that's a no. Mm -hmm. Or like my favorites are people who post a profile and then everything that's posted is not of them. Like it's all other people. So (laughs) I kind of consider those bot accounts. Yeah. And with that... Say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.